which set of successive ionization energies in kilojoule per mole could not be for a transition element? Uh, wait, let me just go through this real quick. You have the data booklet in your Excel? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of taking out the data booklet right now. Okay, the answer is D. Okay, uh, how it's D? Did you check the values from the data booklet? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I was looking at I was looking at some of the data the values for the transition metals just by looking at the data booklet, and it's mm. too sudden of a jump between the second and third, and yeah, it's just too big of a jump. Mm, there's a very big jump. Yeah. Seventeen fifty seven, and then it's a big jump and another big jump. It means is it the forest orbital which is changing now? Could not be yeah. for a transition element. Could not be. The bonding within the complex ion is, this is a complex. Is it right that all transition complexes are having a dative bond? Right. All complexes are, all complexes have a dative bond? All complexes have a dative covalent bond. Yeah. So for it, 100, for that, I would go, the bonding with a complex A, because covalent, it would just have to be covalent, right? And it's a date of covalent because of the CuH206, between Cu and H2O at least. Hmm. So the, uh, co the dative bond is confirmed. Dative bond is confirmed, but there might be some covalent also. Uh, covalent and dative only. Uh, B cannot be the case. C cannot be the case. Only A and B are good competitors. Why should I consider A? Why not D? He's highlighting me. Because it's not ionic. It is not ionic. Hmm? It is not, not ionic. Definitely B and C are out of discussion. But why not D? Not D because it, it still is, there's still normal covalent bonds. Uh, but where are the covalent in this molecule? I think H2O is an electron pair donor. But they know there should be just normal covalent bonds between the H2O bonds itself. Uh, but but I am getting a confusion then here. That... I mean, if you think it's D, you can check the answers if you have it with you. I, I think it's D though. But I know, but there is a confusion. But I will check it also. But uh, the problem is there. My my I was thinking that how. How a covalent is justified here? Copper is in the center. Achha, look, water is a, this is water. It has only uh, lone pairs, available lone pairs. So water can make only dative covalent bond. But anyways, let's see if it, we can go forward. An aqueous solution of a transition metal ion formed a green PPT 
with both ammonia and sodium hydroxide solution. The green PPT dissolved to form a blue solution with excess ammonia was insoluble in excess in NOH. Which of these is the transition metal ion? This is actually a full memory. Green. Green color is for chromium. Uh, for that... Which of these is transition metal ion? D, D, uh, and on. How we just define now this? I was just looking at the other ones and looking for the Cauchy D subshells, and I fits into it. I don't think Fe2 plus, Fe2 plus doesn't. You just have to look at the ion itself. Hmm. Actually, this, these type of questions work on a simple memory because you have to memorize the colors. I think I shared with you the colors, I think. There's a green PPT. Uh, aqueous solution of a transition metal ion form a green PPT with both ammonia and sodium. So who is that? Uh, <clears throat> who is the who is the ion? What ion can make green PPT with both? Alright. D. Okay, if it is D. Because in the table, green PPT is also coming for iron. Yes, but you have to look at the iron charge, not the uh, actual elements. Like the actual charge on it. You look at it. Mm -hmm. Cr plus 3, Cu2 plus, Fe2 plus. Fe2 plus is uh, green solution, green PPT, and then with excess, no change. He says the green P Achha, he says the green PPT dissolved to form a blue solution. This is actually uh, we have to memorize that table, but green I remember for that. Uh. Okay, then D is right and then when aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to a solution containing manganese ion and off-white PPT of manganese 2 hydroxide form, the PPT then gradually turns brown on standing. What type of reaction causes this PPT to change color? Oh. When you leave it, it turns gradually brown. And it means it might be reacting with atmospheric oxygen. Ligand exchange is not possible because we are not adding anything. Dispropo dis disproportionation. Disproportionation is... It's no reaction. We just leave it. Look. The PPT then gradually turns brown. What is this deprotonation? If you take back the protons. So, ligand exchange is not possible. Either it is B or D. Okay, so for hundreds, I would say the answer is D, oxidation. Okay, why? Because it's just changing color, right? When you oxidize, it, the color does change. So disproportionation is just a redox reaction. I don't think it changes color. Deprotonation is the same thing. Ligand exchange, I'm not all that sure, but I also don't think it changes color because you're just exchanging the ligands. Mm -hmm.
phenol C6H5OH. This is my structure for phenol. And look at this. Has a Ka value of 1.8 this much. What is the pH of a 0.1 mole per dm cube solution of phenol? How we do that? Suddenly, how phenol came in? It's not yeah. even partition question, but anyways, it comes in. We have the concentration. Let's do some working. What formula we can use? We need to. What is the pH? The pH would be wait. What's the pH of a zero point one mole dm cubed? Oh, that's okay. Oh, I have to calculate this. Give me a second. Hmm. I have to use a calculator for this. Just give me a bit. Sure. What formula was there? pH is equal to under root Ka. Something was that. Okay, I th the answer for that after checking it out is B. Or at least my calculations are closest to B than the others, so B. So how it how you did that? Any formula? That is one point two eight times ten to the power of negative ten. They also give you the the mole dm cubed of the phenol itself, and they give you the Ka value, and it's o a H plus OH over HA, and then you just multiply it out, and then you do pH minus log 10, that value, and you get your pH value. Ah, uh, then it's fine. It's fine, then zero pH. Okay. Phenyl amine, why is bringing these equations here? Because I think this is something wrong. Because this is not looking to be transition. Phenyl amine is a weak base. This is not transition. What he has done, what he's doing it. Hmm. The elements from scandium to zinc belong to the D block. Most of these elements are transition elements. Complete the electronic configuration of a scandium atom, a manganese 2 ion, and an iron 2 ion. Mm. So you need, a, I think, the periodic table for this. He says complete the periodic, complete the configuration. So let's start with scandium. Scandium, uh, what is the atomic number of scandium? Atomic number of scandium is... already covers 18. 18. Is 21? 21, yeah. 21. So 18 is already there. So mm -hmm. I have to fill three more. So should I put three here? Yes. Then manganese three plus three electrons are lost. So what is the atomic number of manganese? If you see the periodic table. Mm. Three plus. So you remove three electrons. Ah, but what is the atomic number of manganese? Can you see the periodic table? All right. It is, I will if you make a printout of this data booklet and you keep it with in the class, then it will be helpful. No, I have a data book. I'm just looking for where manganese is. Wait. 25. And 25 lost two, lost three electrons. Yeah. 25 minus 3, 22. Right. So it has lost three electrons. So it is 22, then 18. Right. The difference is five. Yeah. I have to put five electrons here. Mm -hmm. Five, yeah. Now the next one is 26 electrons. You're moving to, so it's 24. 
26 minus 2 is equal to 24. 18 already there. So should I put 6 more? Um, yeah. Five. Mm. So should I put some something on four uh, s, or should I leave four s empty in here? Um. You no, know, put wait, wait, wait. For that one, no, don't put it for us. So I will put it here. Yeah, put it there. Scandium, iron, and manganese are D block elements, but only iron and manganese are transition elements. It, 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 basically, the atom, the, at the element has to have at least one iron with a partially filled D subshells in order mm. to be a D block element. Yes, very good. So, by that definition, scandium is not, uh, but iron is there, manganese, but iron and manganese are there. Scandium is not a transition element. As you said, that it should be making at least one orbital, one uh, incomplete the orbital sample. So explained in terms of electronic configuration why Fe2 plus ions are readily oxidized to Fe3 plus, but Mn2 plus ions are not readily oxidized to Mn3 plus. Mm -hmm. Fe2 plus, he says, you, you have to see the configuration made above. Fe2 plus converts into Fe3 plus. Yeah. Why? Wait, what? Do you think, uh, <clears throat> do you think in case of Fe2 plus, let me circle this electron. Do you think this electron will be happily kicked out? No, it'll just, it, it, yeah, no, that'll be the first thing removed when you're removing electrons. Yeah. If, you, if you remove it, it will it be, if if I remove this red circle, will I get D5? Yeah. And D5 is a stable, D10 it's more is stable, so yeah. And orbital is a stable when it is either full or half filled. Yeah. What about MN here? MN is already stable? Yeah, it's stable. So Mn will not be willing to release any electron because Mn is already on D5. Right. And D5 is stable. <coughs> I said there is a correction needed here. Now I see this. Uh, when it's, a, it's not an ion. Scandium is not an ion. Scandium is an atom. So when scandium is an atom, it should be having the two electrons here. Because when you are filling the orbital, you fill the d orbital first, and then you fill the then you fill the s orbit uh, sorry d orbital. You first fill the four s orbital, and then you fill the three d orbital. Oh. Explain why Fe two plus and Fe three plus ions have different colors in aqueous solution. Is it something related with the splitting of D orbital? Um, explain why I have different colors in aqueous solution. The detailed explanation of why metalines are colored is not required. So why Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus have different colors in aqueous solution? Um, I would say that's because there's an energy difference when they split in the, you know, and also because they have different three or D orbitals. So yeah, they're just absorbing and emit different wavelengths of light. So yeah. In, in yeah. the different oxidation states, the difference of the splitted d orbital energy difference is different. Yeah. In different oxidation states, 
the energy gap is not the same. The concentration of a solution of potassium manganate can be found by titration with an arsenic oxide. In this reaction, arsenic oxide is oxidized to arsenic 5 oxide and the mole ratio of this. Reduce the final oxidation number of the manganate. Uh, now, read this question. The concentration of potassium deduce the final oxidation number. Explain your reason. Five moles are being oxidized. If five moles are being oxidized, that means there'll be 20 electrons lost. Well, I'm not sure too sure to go about this. Mm, maybe, but I was thinking that uh, we can write down the oxidation states in our steps. The concentration of a solution, it's KMnO4, can be found by titration with arsenic 3. Arsenic 3 oxide is oxidized to arsenic 5 oxide. So plus 3 to plus 5. And mole ratio of this is 5 is to 4. So I was thinking we are moving from plus 3 to plus 5. So is it right that we are get, we are losing two electrons? Plus three to plus five, like this. Yeah, plus three plus five. Yeah. So we are losing two electrons, and the ratio is five is to four. So we can find the electrons there, and then we can find the magnesium. Let's do it next time. Uh, we are done for today. <clears throat> And uh, you should please try to do this exercise more. And uh, we can start it, inshallah, in our next class. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.